Hi guys. For my presentation in Theater History 2, I'll be shedding light on Stanley McKinless, the McKinless Method, and a little how-to on how to make a McKinless plot in Russell Auditorium. So let's get started. So the question is, who is Stanley McKinless? Well, he's the father of modern stage lighting today. A lot of his ideas are still held to by light designers like me. So let's talk a little bit about his backstory. Well, he was born in Chicago, Illinois in 1897. He actually graduated from the University of Wisconsin-Madison in 1920. He received a degree in architect from Harvard College in 1923. That's actually what he started out in, is actually architect. It wasn't until later, after he graduated, that he started to go into the field of theatrical lighting. It was actually McKinless and George Baker were the first two people to come faculty at the Yale School of Drama, which is actually where he first started teaching theatrical lighting. But we know a lot about what his ideas were from his book, A Method of Lighting the Stage, which he wrote in 1932. It's actually where the McKinless method originated from. What was interesting about that is because that is where a lot of his ideas were. Now, what were those ideas? Well, a lot of it was about one of the most famous ones was breaking the stage, which was big before then. His idea was that lighting designers should break up the stage into multiple parts, and that we should aim lights at those specific parts, which is big, because before then, a lot of line designers just thought of it as lights up, lights down, the entire stage. We see a lot of the idea of breaking up the stage now in most modern line designs. You see a lot of times in a lot of theatrical productions where an actor may be center stage and a light's on him, but the rest of the stage is dim. That comes again with this idea McKinless had of breaking the stage into areas. This idea that one part of the stage may be lit, and the other parts of the stage may be dim, may be blacked out. This other idea of different colors, too. He also believed that colors is a big thing with line designs. You see a lot of the flashy designs you see in Broadway stem from this idea McKinless had of how color is important. Intensity was also a thing he thought important. So again, talking back about how in musicals, you see how... When there's a big musical number, there'd be a spotlight on one actor, and then everyone else may be a bit dim. That's, again, an idea McKinless would spoke about, how intensity is very, very important to line design. It could be... It would really give life to it. He also wrote another thing before then, in 1927, called the Syllabus of Stage Lighting, which he talked about more about the emotional side of lighting, and how really lighting is not just lights up and lights down, that it helps breach this the emotional feel of the play, that lighting is another form of art. And that's what he really preached about. And that's how we got into like professions like mine. And that's why I love the profession so much. Another big thing he did was he designed house lights for the Center Theater in New York and Radio City. He used ellipsoidal reflectors, which is actually really important because those became the prototype of Lico's today. Now, for the people who don't know what Lico's are, if you walk into Russell Auditorium and you look up, you'll see them in the front row of the house. Now, what we use the house lights for, I mean, the Lico's are just so important because they are the first units that allow us to shutter cut, which means essentially it allows us to manipulate the light inside to do whatever you need it to be. So if you ever see a light on a theater where maybe it's kind of breaching off a little bit too much, Alico allows us to shutter cut that to get the exact size of the light we want, which is huge. And you see a lot of theaters use Alicos. It's one of the most famous conventional units that theatrical people use today because before then all theatrical people would have is one beam of light that we couldn't adjust at all you see that in pars or in strands but Lico's gave us the first opportunity to shutter cut those lights and to allow the designer to bend the light to what they wanted to do and so McKinless helped start that when he pushed put in those prototypes in the Radio City. What happened later in his life is that he ended up retiring in 1964. 
He ended up dying when he was 70. If you want to read any more of his papers, you can go to Yale. And that's where you find a lot of his famous stuff. In fact, Yale actually offers the Stanley R. McKinley Scholarship to line designers every year, which is the big thing, and shows just how much influence he's had on the line community. So now, let's also talk about the most famous thing about McKinley's, the McKinley's Method. So, let's change scenes. So now let's talk about the McKinley's Method for a second. And why is it so important for line designers? Well, the best way to show that is through this physical representation and to give you a little context. When frontlining, for the most point, people believed that we should only use one light and just hit the actor from the front with one light with one color, one universal color. Now, you see a lot of shows will do that, and sometimes they have to, sometimes they choose to. The problem McKinless had with that is that it looked kind of flat because he only had one color hitting the actor from the front. He believed that we should use two lights instead, hitting from two sides with two different colors. He believed that we should use one warm and one cool, hitting the actor from both sides from the front, 90 degrees apart, 45 up. Now, the reason why he believed that is because it gives the actors more of a sculpture-esque look. It allows the actors to be hit by two different colors, a cool and a warm from the front. It gives them more definitions through their makeup, through whatever, through their costume, through whatever. And it allowed the designer to have more opportunity. So, for example, if they were in a scene that was a bit cooler, like, for example, at night, what the designer could do is they could bump up the cool and lower the warm, giving it a more cooler, darker feel. Now, of course, it was for during the daytime, the dying designer can bump up the warm and drop the cool, giving it a warm feel. That being said, that allowed the designers more opportunity. It gave them more variety that was kind of not allowed or even possible when you only had one front light. McKinless believed by giving you two front lights in two different colors, it gave the designers more variety to look for, something that they could do, something that they didn't get the chance to do with only one front light. Now let's talk about doing a McKinless plot for Russell Auditorium. So first, let me show you a finished McKinless plot for a solitorium. So I'm only going to show you how the front of house looks. Now as you can see, and this is forewarning for any future line designers watching this video, whatever space you're in, it's going to kind of dictate. And you will have to cheat occasionally, so you may not get that 90 degree separation from each unit like you would hope. But for line 3 areas in Russell, I would choose this and this as a pair, this and this as a pair, and this and this as a pair. So when deciding colors, I would go, it's up to the designer in the end what they would choose, but I would say probably for a warm, some good variations are this pale gold, this nice yellow, some amber, some light pink, like this, it's a good color. And then for your cool, I would always recommend going near the lighter 51, which is a surprise pink, or a nice little lavender, or really a really nice blue. But you want to make sure you don't make them too drastic, because remember, you're hitting them in the face with this. So you don't want it to overtake the actor's makeup. Because the point of McKinless is supposed to help bring it out, not overtake it. So once you decide where exactly you want to put them on the plot, so like I showed in my example, I had to cheat a bit, which you will always have to do sometimes, depending on the space you're in. But once you decide that, you choose your color, and there you go. The thing about Sam McKinless, and the reason why he's such a big influence, is because he brought these ideas that lighting is not just lights up and lights down, that it's actually about emotion. It's that it's about it's about designers showing off and helping to play. And lining is not just some stereotypical 
oh, we're just going to light up here and that's it, but about showing emotion. And that's why Sam McKinley is so important to me and other line designers. So I hope this whole presentation has been informational. And please read more about Sam McKinley if you ever have any more interest. Read his two books. They were great to read. Now, have a good day and always stay lit.